Hello, Leo. Welcome, Pussycat Nation, to your reading with me, Cindy. <laughs> there is a fly living in my room with me here, and he's climbing up the window. And he doesn't really... I sit here, and I'll get ready. I'll pre pick cards. I'll pre-shuffle. There's no fly. As soon as I sit down to record, he starts crawling up the window. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to try to ignore the fly, and I'm going to focus on your reading for you. And I sat down, and it was really, really clear. Like, I've been doing for some of the other signs. I've been doing, um like current and future i heard past present future for you so you're getting the whole shebang here leo the whole shebang past present and future energy i'm going to pull out one oracle card from the oracle or the divine animal oracle and i'm going into the uncommon tarot to really look at your past present and future it is general, so you know, it may or may not resonate. If it does resonate and you're drawn to it, there is an extended. The link to that is at the top of the description within this video. I just got this feeling. I don't know if it's going to come out in this reading, but I don't know if you saw like a slight pause when I was kind of doing my little spiel there. I just had this feeling like this was a really important reading. <laughs> well, they're all really important, but I don't know what that was. So I don't know if it's like going to come out or it's going to mean something important to somebody. You have peace right now, Gorilla. That's really interesting because this is the same card that Gemini actually got. And it is about being in a state of peacefulness. Ah, but wait a second. For you, it's a little different. It's a, it is a different message that I'm getting from you and Gemini. So um, you can go and watch theirs if you want, if you're curious. But I'm going to focus on yours. Um, yours is the approach of something. You're approaching something. You're like anticipating something. You're approaching it. You're anticipating it. I don't know if there's conflict in the past associated with it. There's a sense that there could be conflict in this as you approach something. The bottom is ritual with the bias in and responsibility. Ritual and responsibility. I'm going to wait and see how this connects because it could connect in a specific spot here or it could connect like more broadly but with the ritual card and responsibility there's a sense of if you are approaching something here like if you're sitting in peace right now but you are like i don't know you're anticipating something in the future maybe there's something that you have to do and it might have something to do with responsibilities or leadership that you have here but then the ritual and the bison, like it does, it's almost like something that you do every day. But there's one day in particular where you, where there's something that you're approaching that's kind of, could be confrontational. I'm not really feeling like that. I'm just feeling like there's some tension or nerves or I don't know what it is. So let's, let's see. Looking for guidance as you get there, too. Yeah, see, Gemini's was more, now that I'm just shuffling, like Gemini's was more definitely being in this uh, sense of peacefulness and, and watching um, <laughs> shit blowing up around them and just stay out of it for now. Don't get involved. Um, but yours is like, yeah, you're in a sense of peacefulness, but you're approaching. Approaching something from the past or approaching something that, I don't know, like you have just a feeling there's, I've, I've used this many times, like when I give examples, but because this feeling is so recognizable, I think it's kind of like anticipating doing something that is putting you on the edge a little bit, like having to deliver a speech in an auditorium, maybe to like 200 people. You know it's coming. You're anticipating it, and you're you've got a bit of anxiety around it. Maybe you've done it before. Maybe you've done it to just like your sales group or something. But no, you got to pitch this to the whole company. Like it's just it feels like that. Like it has something to do with your rituals, something that you do all the time. But you're going in. Uh, like it could be even going into town. Like going into town, going to a store, and um. 
or maybe there's someone there that you haven't seen in a long time you're like ah you're feeling apprehensive about it for some reason but you know you got to go in and got to buy broccoli <laughs> too many ways come on it just feels like that it's weird it's not i don't feel like it's anything big i don't i don't feel like you're walking into like um a huge argument or a family war or anything like that it just feels feels edgy it just feels a little edgy so let's look at your past present and future we're gonna get three cards for each i'm hearing three cards for each and this is a very different deck i haven't been using it that often so i'd be curious to kind of see what kind of messages come out with it that i picked it for you past one Present. Future. Oh. Wow. It's interesting. Is that? I gotta tell you, it looks good. <laughs> it looks good, and and maybe it is even something that. You know, you're hoping for that could be really good, but I don't know. Like, even when something good is coming in, like, it's change. So, it feels like it's probably a change. Even a good change can kind of rattle us a little bit. Um, it's, a, it's a change from where you are now, which I think is needed because that's not great. Okay, so in the past, look at you had the Ace of Wands. You had the Magician. And then you had the Three of Coins. Presently, you've got the Eight of Cups, the Three of Swords, and this is the Wanderer. It's like the Fool, the Fool card, uh, presently. And then in the future, you've got the Ten of Cups, the Queen of Cups, and the King of Swords. There's that feeling. There, like, it's, you know what I mean? There's that feeling, like, maybe you, maybe this is a heads up. Like, maybe you don't even know. You're going to go into town. You're going to go to the grocery store. And you just figure and you're going to do your regular thing. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be okay. You're finally getting out. Because this is a feeling right here of kind of, like, being, like, really distant from things that mean something to you. And kind of taking a chance. I'm going to go out today. And that's going really good. And then you go into the store. And I don't know. There's something, like... The King of Swords was unexpected with how everything was coming out. It'll be interesting to clarify it because the Ten of Cups and the Queen of Cups, that is just like really happy freaking energy. That is really happy energy. That is a massive transformation from this Three of Swords, which is kind of sitting here for you right now. So something's not feeling too good on a more personal level. In the past, there was something to be excited about. You know what? I want to say, I want to say if there was something to be excited about, it actually feels like more of a point of emotional or mental manifestation or maybe the combination of the two, like having a really great idea and manifesting and planning and creating for it. And then it's almost like waiting. It's a little bit like waiting or perhaps the plan didn't go out, go so well. But once you get past these sort of feelings of maybe disappointment or emotional withdrawing from it, it there's like just kind of wanting to take a leap, a leap of faith here. Mm, this King of Swords bothers me. And it's kind of like what I'm seeing on the horizon here, like this smoke. And yeah, you're watchful. Okay, the bottom we have the Page of Swords, the Queen of Coins, the Two of Cups, the Three of Cups, the Ten of Swords, it's all in the upright because it's I haven't used this deck that much, so it's not all mixed up. But okay, okay, this is what I see here. There's something in the future that has a, a like enormous potential, at least in your mind. <laughs> Just want to say, because I'm reading your energy, so at least in your mind, it has an enormous potential for happiness for uh, emotional happiness, for wish fulfillment. Um, like just a beautiful, really comfortable energy. But then 
this king of swords and i'm telling you it is not like any typical king like this is a, what do you call these guys i don't know it's like it's not a samurai i don't think the um some dynasty in china had these guys didn't they and there were a whole bunch of like a uh, soldiers like stone soldiers that were carved out like the i can't remember but you know they're pretty intimidating <laughs> like it is a very intimidating king of swords in a, in a situation in the future where you would, you know, want to see good feelings, want to feel good things. So when I look at that and I look at what's underlined is the page of swords. So here we're kind of looking, kind of looking for the signs, kind of looking for the opportunity. Keeping your eyes open, keeping your ears peeled. Or is it your eyes peeled and your ears open? I don't know what that is. But okay, then we have the queen of coins. So we're going from like a really stable abundant comfortable situation but then you get the two of cups the three of cups and ten of swords it's almost like there it is there's this happiness the two of cups there it is there's this really like great happy feeling but then something just almost like cuts through it no none of that and it, i don't know it's weird because the three of cups is followed by the ten of swords so it could almost be like going to the grocery store and then you see someone that, you, I don't know, maybe you got like a huge heartthrob for this person. And you're walking down the aisle and you're going to go talk to them. And then all these other people walk in and go, oh, hi, Jane. Hi, Peter, or whatever this person is. Oh, we haven't seen you in forever. When did you come back into town? And it's just like, uh, no. So you go to the cash register and you pay for your broccoli and you walk out. <laughs> it's like, about it's it's a weird kind of energy i just gonna say now it feels like something hopeful well let's clarify let's just let's not go on cindy's feelings here let's just clarify i'm going right into the future <laughs> i'm going right into the future here because this is the thing that's really like got me going what is this I could say with the King of Swords is it wasn't just how the artwork of this card comes out and then what that underline was. I could say it is like extremely clear. Um, you are or someone or both of you too with the Queen of Cups are very, very clear about how you feel about something. What makes you happy in a situation? Or perhaps you both make each other happy or there's some sort of emotional connection. It'd be really clear about that with the King of Swords. But the underline and just the artwork in this card has got me apprehensive. So let's see what the clarifier, if it changes anything in this. The Ten of Cups. The Ace of Cups, the Queen of Wands. Oh, sorry. The Ace of Cups and the Queen of Wands. It's exciting. It's exciting. It really is exciting energy. It's happiness. It's spontaneity. It's creativity. It's um, mm, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel sexy. It makes you feel excited. <laughs> it's like... Okay, and then the Queen of Cups, the Knight of Swords, the Hanged Man, the Ace. Of, oh, what is going on there? See, there's there. We're, no, now we got all our in our head here. <laughs> That's what happened. We're kind of going on feelings and emotions and excitement. And then it's almost like you get to the point of expressing something. You want to charge in and you hold back. And you're like, mm, how do I do this? I don't know. Look at that. Knight of Swords is going in, going in, going in. Oh, let me think about this. Let me look at this situation. Let me think about this situation. <laughs> I just... And then the Ace of Swords, like something becomes clear about the situation. The King of Swords, this is the one that worries me. The King of Swords. Oh, shit, I knew it. It's the Ten of Swords and the Five of Cups. Oh, what is this? It's like, it sucks. It does, it, it feels like, I feel like I'm raining on a parade here. Because it's just like all this excitement, maybe. And then it just gets like swept away. It's just that, that feeling of defeat, the Ten of Swords twice. Because that came out after the Three of Cups. Yeah. 
Like you can't get it going. It really does feel like that. Like you've been in town for a bit. And I just say like in it, or you've been, okay, I'm going to say something else. So when I was shuffling this deck, a really weird thing happened. Like pre-shuffling, the hermit card got bent out of shape. And I kind of ha ha ha, there he is, and laughed at myself. Because it's such a funny story. One of the other teeny tiny tarot decks I had, it was, like, he's got a little bent. I've been trying to straighten it now. Um, the the Knight of Cups got bent out of shape. And it was a Virgo reading where I was talking about it. And it totally slipped. Like, it was just really, it was funny, actually, what I ended up saying. And didn't mean to say at the time. But, and there, so now I have another bent out of shape card in this deck. But it's Virgo. It's the Hermit, which is Virgo energy. But the But the Hermit is bent out of shape. It was almost like a message like that. And that's what I'm getting. It's almost like... You live somewhere or you've been distant from something. I'm just seeing like you're at home. You've run out of broccoli or milk or whatever the hell it is. I'm going to go into town. You're going to go to the store. Like it just has a sense of familiarity with, for me with it. Like, because it has to do with responsibilities and rituals. However that plays out. It could be a workspace. It's somewhere that is a very ritualistic. You go there all the time. And you're about to go there. And something's going to be different. It almost feels like someone's going to be there and probably someone that you haven't seen in a long time. Like that whole scenario of you see them down the ice cream aisle. <laughs> oh, that's Jane or Peter or whoever. I'm going to go say hi. I haven't seen them in forever. So you kind of start walking down the aisle, right? Like there, that's this feeling. That's this feeling of all this excitement right now and almost like about to express how happy you are to see them maybe right how happy you are to see them chart oh the way is clear the knight of swords you're going in but i don't know why you hesitate maybe the bell rings on the door and you look back and oh that's all of jane's friends or your friends or there's like something changes about this like all of a sudden you you feel like you need to stop and you need to take a whole new perspective with the hanged man. You're not charging forward. Something becomes clear. Something becomes clear not to charge forward. That's what I almost feel like. Because this is not charging forward now. With the king of swords, the ten of swords, the five of cups. Something becomes very clear that you don't go down that aisle now. Let me see why. Why is this so clear? What is so clear? What becomes so clear? Why did that come out? I don't know. Yeah, it makes sense for asking for clarity. Four swords. There's two pages here. The four of swords, the page of wands, the page of swords, and the lovers. It kind of feels like, like, again, we have two pages. And I said, like, it almost feels like extra energy comes in. Like, extra people or something come into a situation. And that makes it clear that, are these other options? Are these other options? Because the lovers is about having choices, making choices. And there's two choices here. There's a page of wands and there's a page of swords. Part of it, because these pages are a little bit different. Like the page of wands to me is kind of actively communicating. The page of swords can be more like watching and listening. So it could, like, there's definitely something. Go I don't know if you get in your own head about something in the future. And then you just decide, you know what? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do this. That's what it feels like. It definitely feels like you decided, I don't think I'm going to do this. I don't think I'm going to approach them. I don't think I'm going to say anything. And it could um, either be because there's other people that come into the situation. Something happens in the situation that changes your perspective. And then you think, okay, no. And it's, I don't know. I'm going to be, I'm going to tell you like, 
with the King of Swords and the Ten of Swords and the Five of Cups, I kind of feel like it's just realizing that this there's, this one's not going to happen. So, <laughs> let's, now that I really rained on that parade, let's look at the Eight of Cups and the Three of Swords. I do want to say, like, if there was something here that you're really hopeful about, it's going to be clear, like, to at least, you know what? Like, don't, I feel like that. So to me, that also says it releases you from something so that you can find the right path for you. The Eight of Cups, like where you are right now, the Eight of Cups and the Three of Swords. I mean, maybe part of it is this is not the best energy to be moving anywhere in. So the Eight of Cups. Oh my gosh, the Nine of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups. It's almost like right now, I feel like... I I don't know could this reading because i don't really feel like reading should be intended to to stop you from doing something that you would have done anyways and i don't feel like a reading would ever come out that way for anyone unless you were specifically asking for that guidance and we weren't doing that so part of me wants to say that i think this reading could be trying to help you change the energy that you're in right now before you get over here that's the only thing that would make sense to me for me to be getting this kind of information about your future. Because if I, okay, if I was you and I was getting this reading from Cindy and I, it was resonating and I would say, well, I'm not even going to bother going to the grocery store. <laughs> like, what, what is the point of going to the grocery store then? Or if I go to the, I'll have to go because I have to get milk and broccoli. <laughs> what if you have to get and you'll see in my I'm not even going to bother and go try to go down and say, hi, I'm just going to go to cash register and I'm just going to pay for my stuff and I'm just going to leave. But like, I, I believe very strongly that tarot is not intended to change your course of direction unless it's something that's meant for you, but presently you're not entering the right energy to go there, to go into that. And I, I, and it's kind of coming through here because where we are right now is not great energy. It's the Eight of Cups and the Three of Swords. And it's the Fool, but it's called the Wanderer. So it's kind of like almost not even having a plan and just kind of being in a, in a disappointed energy. And then an opportunity comes towards you and something changes your mind and it's something either factual or in your head. So the three of swords, the three of swords, the two of wands and the two of pentacles. Like, I don't even know. Are you ready for this? Maybe that's what it is. Are you really ready for this? I feel like this reading is to get you ready for whatever this is. Two of wands and two of pentacles. Yeah, maybe. Oh, maybe not. I should go and do this. I don't know. It's a little wishy-washy, but that's the wishy-washy has kind of got you in this Three of Swords energy. It's hoping to move forward, but I don't know that today's a good day to do that. I probably should do this instead, or maybe I should do that. Oh, what the hell? Let's just go, <laughs> right? Like with the Wanderer. The Wanderer, <laughs> the Fool card. The Nine of Cups. I want, or not, I want another card with that. Something else tried to come out. I didn't see what it was. There's the Nine of Cups. The Four of Cups. The Justice card. The Moon and the Emperor. We got some heavy cards coming in here for the Fool. Like it's all Major Arcana but two. What am I having? Five, six cards. Four of them are Major Arcana. Nine of Cups, Four of Cups, Justice, the Moon, and the Emperor. Is this a bit like just taking a chance? But taking a chance, okay. The Nine of Cups into the Four of Cups. I feel like you could be putting yourself in a position in the future. 
that could affect your your emotional happiness. I know it's a weird thing to say because, well, we want to say that our emotional happiness, like really to be in the Nine of Cups, we're our own sovereignty in that. But you are making a choice to do something or a decision to do something, but the energy sitting behind it doesn't feel conducive to an awesome outcome. Like you're trying to get either some clarity or some answers with the justice card because the moon is sitting here. There's a big, a big unknown. And then the emperor. It could even be something like just going into your boss's office and asking for a raise, you know, like it has something to do with your responsibilities, rituals that you partake in every day and looking at his door. I <laughs> mean, is today the day I do it? Mm, no, I'm going to do it on Thursday. Like you almost like you make yourself a promise. I'm going to do this on Thursday. I'm going to do this on Friday. I'm going to do this on Wednesday, whatever day that ends up being for you. And then you even like mark it on your calendar. And so you anticipate it like it's leading up to that because that's what like you're watching it. It's like that feeling. I still have that anticipating and it could be a conflict because you could walk in. He's going to say, I'm not going to give you a raise. I don't know. Yeah, and right, and like maybe you get there, you're about to walk. I feel good about this. I've psyched myself up. And then you see Jane and Peter walking up to the office too. Oh, right. Like you see something happens with other individuals in some sort of situation in the future that changes that it changes your your stride here. And so maybe Jane and Peter come out and they go, oh yeah, we got those raises. Did it just in time because apparently that's all that's left in the budget, right? Like that becomes pretty clear with the King of Swords, the Ten of Swords, the Five of Cups. So I'm trying to give these different scenarios because the different ways it could be coming into your life here. The Ace of Wands. This is the past. The Six of Pentacles and the High Priestess. This is like having a really exciting idea about something. But, it, you know, it's not really, I don't really feel like you're doing anything about it. Or you did in the past. With the Six of Pentacles, it's sort of like having a really exciting idea or something inspired you. Or it seemed pretty exciting. But I'm going to kind of keep the, a down low with that. I'm going to keep it quiet and just focus on my responsibilities and the duties that I have to those around me. Again, with the responsibility and the rituals. The Magician. The Magician. There's the Hermit, the Ace of Pentacles, and the Chariot. Look at that. See? So in the past, you have been like a lot of self-focus here on some sort of new beginning. Maybe it is to go and ask for a raise. Maybe it is to start a business, like a new business or a work project for yourself. And you got to go to the bank and you got to work yourself up and have a good like business plan so that they'll give you a loan or something like it's just. I don't feel like you're not anticipating something in the future for yourself. That was funny. That little thing just my one of my devices just went ding when I said that. And then the chariot, right? Like kind of getting this going forward. Let's get some movement here. Let's make this happen. The three of coins. The eight of coins and the ten of wands. This is hard work. It's like, this is really hard work. Work is a burden. Well, maybe it is. You want to go and tell your boss, hey, it's a burden. I need a raise. In the past, you're really trying to work through this burden. The magician. Let's look at the gorilla in peace. I'm don't don't get too out yet. I'm gonna be asking a question here. Peace and gorilla. Seven of wands. Three of wands and the empress. Seven of wands, three of wands, and the empress. Yeah, well, there's yeah, look at I mean we're talking about almost like seeing something in the future. The seven of wands and the three of wands, anticipating 
defense is being up. Yeah, you walk into your boss's office and he's thinking, yeah, you're going to ask for something. I can just tell why you <laughs> And the Empress. This is like a big hope. But the Empress. So the Emperor and the Empress are here. It's something that really feels like it's meant for you. And it has a lot to do with big abundance, big growth, happiness. Okay, I need to go to a different deck and I need to ask, what is the best approach for you for success in the future? I almost feel like I'm doing an extended free right now. Look at this. This is like really tired of trying to meet Sally in the grocery store or... Wait, that didn't just end there. And what did end? The King of Swords is in reverse. This is a weird reading. Um, what card do I want? Okay, let's go to the Energy Oracle deck. Okay, Energy Oracle deck. Okay, for Leo in the future, what is the best approach for them for to have success? And whatever that may be. Maybe the universe is telling you not to do something because that's not the road you're meant to have. So we're going to see. I'm just going to see here. I kind of want to clarify that just because this energy isn't the greatest. So I want to say part of this might just be because of the energy that you're in right now. Don't put, don't create such high expectations too, maybe. I mean, it's a ten of cups, the queen, the ace of cups, the queen of wands, you know, and the queen of cups and... Oh, it's, uh, I don't know. Okay. The best approach for Leo for success in the future. The best approach for Leo for success in the future. Oh, oh, too much coming out. Okay, well, the one, the one and only that came out upright is the fourth chakra. It's to go in with your heart. Maybe that's what happens here. You don't go in with your heart. You want to, and then you stop. Stop the presses. Big period. Full stop. That. That's the best approach. Your heart chakra. The fourth chakra. See, you were leading up to it. What is all this stuff? The so temple path, the sun, appreciation, the thinking woman. I don't want to get too caught up in that right now. might be something for you. But I, well, I need to keep the momentum in this. Because look it. You're going there. You're going there. Like this is emotional happiness. This is maybe this is love. <laughs> no. That just sounds creepy. With your boss. The Ten of Cups. The Queen of... I shouldn't say that. Because maybe you are. The Ten of Cups. Or the eight, Ten of Cups. The Ace of Cups. The Queen of Wands. This cycle in the future is based on passion and love and drive. It's the most primal, yet the most significant aspect of creation on earth. And here you go. Ready to go with it. Ready to do it. Queen of Cups. Oh. Knight of Swords. I'm going to charge. Maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I'm going to just figure out what the truth is here. Get it into your freaking head. Don't do that. Because the minute you get into your head is where we end up in the King of Swords and everything falls apart. <laughs> and it was looking so good. That's why I got so upset. I was looking so good and then what happened? Da, 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 da. You know what? If, you know, Jane and Peter or whoever could start walking down the aisle, let them have their little talk. Or maybe you just walk right down and say hi. To ignore them. <laughs> and say hi, uh, Sally or Tom or <laughs> whatever. It's nice to see you. Act like Jane and Peter aren't even there. Like, go in with your heart chakra, like a blunt, a guns a blazing. Heart chakra, guns a blazing. What was at the bottom? Anything else with that? No, <laughs> just a deceit card. Because it's almost like if you don't go in with the energy that you're really feeling in this and utilize that to make it happen, you are. You're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving everyone. And look at this, right? You got to end this deception. The Nine of Wands, the Page of Cups in the world. That's ending the deception about maybe maybe it's like, well, you have small feelings here. But no, yeah, these seem pretty big. This seems pretty big. You don't necessarily have, well, I don't know. It's just kind of telling you to go in with <laughs> guns are blazing. Oh, from one fire sign to another. That's appropriate, doesn't it? There. So that's the answer. That's why. Okay. <laughs> Sorry.
I don't know. It's so easy for me to be critical. I'm just like an, um, what do you call those? Um, an armchair coach or an armchair. It's like, you know what you should have done? This, I'm just saying, that's what, you know. So I'm going to go. Now I've given you our time, Leo, my sweet pussy cats. I'm going to go and do the extended. Uh, I'm going to leave it open for spirit just to talk to you in that, whatever's going to happen over there. Until next time, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.